Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. And good afternoon. Amen. God bless you. We just thank God for you uh, that have tuned in. And we want to take a moment and just welcome you to this Wednesday noon Bible study here at Community Fellowship Church of Jesus Christ. We just greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where Bishop Sandra McFadden Weaver is our bishop. And we wanted to say a special thank you to her for giving us this opportunity uh, to do this, to bring this class before you today. As you already know, we are uh, observing Advent and we're grateful for this time. I wanna go into a word of prayer and then we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about uh, this season that we're in and uh, just see what the Lord would have for us to do, amen. Let us pray. Precious Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come today first to say thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness, God, and your tender mercies. Oh God, for you have been so good to us. It is so true that you have been better to us than we have even been to ourselves. But from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we know that your name is worthy to be praised. And someone has already said, if I had... 10,000 tongues, I still couldn't give your name the just praise. So what we've decided to do is to, is to praise you with the one tongue that we have, to bless you, to lift you up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory. Now, God, we lift up all of those that are saying, pray for me. Those that uh, are, are going through situations in their life and they don't know what to do. Uh, God, we ask even now that you would just give them to look to the hills from which come if they help because we realize that their help, our help, all of our help, it comes from you. Lord God, somebody even on today is troubled because of a loss in their family or a friend. Well, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would speak to the heart, speak to the mind, give them to know, God, that you are too wise to make a mistake. God, we pray for every pastor right now. We pray for every minister, God, in the name of Jesus, every evangelist, everyone that's standing on the wall proclaiming your word in this dark age. We bless you, God. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you even for this season of Advent that we are in. We love you today, God, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you, my friends. Uh, we're grateful today uh, for this opportunity just to be able to come before you. You know we are uh, in the middle, so to speak, not really in the middle yet, but this is our second week of Advent. And uh, for those of you that have been sticking with uh, the study and uh, of Advent, we just want to remind you uh, exactly what, what it is, because someone is already asking, well, really, uh, Bishop Mack, what is Advent all about? Why do we uh, celebrate Advent? And I'm so glad you asked. Uh, as we look, when we look at the word Advent, uh, it simply means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. I'll say that again for those of you that are taking notes. You know, I often ask you, amen, to have your index card or have a pad and a pen ready so that you can take down a jog a note or something that you can look at a little later. Again, Advent is the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. Amen. Amen. It's also, it is a season of preparation. In Latin, that's what Advent means, a season of, of, of preparation uh, for the coming. Amen. And so we know that the Lord is coming Praise God. He's coming back again. So he, we, we have this season of preparation. Amen. Now, and now, this ties in because they were preparing for his birth. Remember, that was the first thing, the arrival of a notable person. So 
then they prepared, they had to prepare themselves. They had to make ready, amen, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, amen. And so just like they made ready for his arrival, for his birth, amen, as believers today, we are making ready, we are getting ready for the coming, praise God, the second coming. He's on his way, he's coming back, and he's giving us opportunity and ample time, amen, to prepare, to get ourselves ready. Uh, it, it makes me think of the song we used to sing when I was growing up, said, be ready when he comes. Be ready when he comes, amen. Don't let him catch you with your work undone because he's coming again so soon. Amen. Praise God. And I don't know about you today, but I am so glad that he's on his way back. When we look at uh, the condition and the shape of things and how things are looking, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful just to know, amen, that the Lord is on his way back. So since we know that, amen, we, we're preparing ourselves, we're preparing and getting ready, getting stuff out of us, amen, that don't need to be there when he comes, amen, amen. So on this, this is the second week uh, of Advent, praise God, and uh, this, on this, in this second week of Advent, uh, the word uh, for the second week, amen, is peace, amen, Peace as we prepare for the second coming of the Lord. Amen. He wants you to have peace. And I don't know if you really stop and think about sometimes how it seems as though, especially here of lately uh, with the pandemic and, and with, every, with folks rushing here and there, uh, our peace has been challenged. Amen. Praise God. You know, because even the scripture says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Praise God. So we already know, amen, that we have an adversary, amen, that does not want you to have what? Peace. Praise God. Say it with me. Peace. Amen. So what I want to do, what I want you to do today I want you to get your index card, your little card. I want you to get that out. And I want you to write on that index card, I have peace. Amen. I want you to write it on there. And I want you to put that in the bathroom, put it up on the mirror in your bathroom or perhaps uh, in your bedroom, amen, on the mirror. So when you wake up, amen, maybe in the middle of the night or in the morning, praise God, or when you lay down, you'll be reminded Amen. That you have peace. Amen. Stop allowing the enemy to come in and rob and steal and take away your peace because all you have to do is think about what you had to go through to get peace. So in other words, what I'm saying to you today is it's got to mean something to you. And when, when, when it means something to you, amen, you won't be so quick to give it away. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're talking about peace. So the first thing I want to share with you from the word of the Lord, it comes from uh, one of Paul's writings in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter two. Those of you taking notes. Amen. Ephesians chapter two. I want to begin with the 10th verse. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So my good works. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Now, you got, you got to catch this because now again, look at verse 11 said, therefore, remember. See, it's some things you, you can't be so quick to forget. 
but you got to remember, amen, what has already been done for you at the cross. You got to remember, praise God, when your back was up against the wall and you didn't have no peace and how God came in in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of trouble and gave you peace. You got to remember these things so that when the enemy does come in like a flood, amen, the standard that will be raised up will be the fact that God has given you peace. So again, verse 11 says, therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, because we were Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands that at, at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Look what he said. But now, ah, uh, you know, if we was in church, I'd say, tell your neighbor, but now. Amen. Praise God. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Are you listening today? Amen. Look, remember when you didn't have no peace, when you wasn't even thinking about the Lord. Amen. You didn't even have the Lord on your mind. You wasn't even thinking about trying to live right, trying to walk right. Amen. Trying to do right. And this is another reason, amen, praise God, those of you that uh, still have your peace, because I realize that even while I'm teaching this, it's some of you that's watching, and you have already allowed the enemy to rob you and steal your peace. Amen. You scratching your head. You're trying to figure out what happened. Uh, when, Where did my peace go? Why is it that my, it seemed like my life is, is in such an uproar. It seemed like uh, I can't find no peace nowhere. Amen. Praise God. But I want you to know today, Amen. The Lord has come even this week. Amen. The teaching is on peace. Praise God. Because I, it is so important for you to recognize that you have peace. You don't have to go nowhere and buy it. You don't have to borrow it from nowhere. Amen. But I want you to know you've got to go down on the inside of you. Praise God. Because that's where it's at. Amen. Ah, bless your name. And when you go in, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You will discover that that which you thought you had lost. The songwriter said he was there all the time. Amen. Praise God. So let's let's keep let's keep looking here and see what is he saying to us tonight. Hallelujah. I'm back up to verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You know that they, we're still singing the song in church. The blood still works. So I want you to know. I want you listen. You got to grab hold to this word today. You got to grab hold. You got to hold on to it. Amen. Like the old patriarchs would hold on to it, like with with on with the horns of the altar. Just hold on to it and say, "I have peace." Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's keep going. Verse 14 says, for he himself is our peace. Are you listening today? Are you reading along with me? For he himself is our peace. So if that is true and the word of God is true, I want to ask you this question. Do you have Jesus? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? I mean, have you submitted to him? Because if you have submitted, if you have surrendered your life to him, according to what the apostle Paul is saying to us right here in the scripture in verse 14, it says, for he and his, and I know he's talking about the Lord because it's the capital H, I mean, he, capital H-E, he, for he himself is 
not will be, not is going to be, but he is. That's right now. He is our peace. Hallelujah. He is our peace who made both one, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I, listen, this is so important that we stop allowing, amen, any and everything to rob us of our peace. So since this is the word, amen, for the week, every time you see that word, I want you to remind yourself, amen, I have peace. Amen. I have the peace of God. Come on, say it with me. I have peace. I have the peace of God. All right, that's one scripture. Let's, let's look at here. Amen. Praise God. Let's look and see what else the writer is saying to us today. Amen. Regarding your peace. Let's look at Romans. Romans chapter 12 and verse 18. Listen what it says. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. This is how important it is for you to have peace. See, when you have peace, it doesn't, listen, you can live in hell and not be affected by it. Things can be going on all around you and it won't affect you because you have, there's an inside job that's happened to you and it's called peace. Praise God. So the writer said, he said, if it is at all possible, I want you to live, amen, peaceably. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, I, and, and I'm glad he said, if it is at all possible, because sometimes uh, and, and maybe y'all don't have any family members like that, but sometimes it's people that we allow in our circle that refuse to let us live in peace. You know, there are some people, they just seemingly, they're not happy unless they can create confusion. They're not happy unless you unhappy. Are you listening today? Praise God. They're not happy unless they start stirring up some old mess or starting something or want to remind you of, of the past or want to point somebody's faults out and say, oh, did you see sister so-and-so? Oh, she really think, you know, just all of that. You got to block that out. And sometimes you have to keep people out of your circle. Amen. In order to maintain your peace. Y'all to help me say it again. I have peace. Praise God. So if that means blocking somebody out of your circle so that you can maintain your peace, guess what? You got to do that. You owe it to yourself. Amen. To have peace and to live in peace. Amen. I live in peace. You got sometimes you just got to say it. You got to declare. You, sometimes you have to just say, I declare and I decree that I will live in peace. Are you listening today? Amen. Praise God. And then, then we go on, on over a little bit farther in Romans chapter 14 and verse 19 says, let us therefore follow after the thing which make for peace. Are you listening? I'm, let, me, let me just pause for a second because you got to get this. Again, he said, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. <laughs> you got to you gotta decide what is it I have to do to have peace? What do I have to do, amen, to get my mind Amen. Back. What do you mean when you say back? Back on the Lord. Because you can remember the time when you lived in peace. You can remember the time when things didn't get next to you. You can remember the time, amen, when the anointing, amen, flowed so in your life. Watch this. That people didn't even bring mess to you. Are you listening today? But now, amen, people treat you like you are open garbage can. Just bring all that mess 
and throw all of that in your mind. Amen. And you're trying to figure out why you don't have peace. It's because you have become an open garbage can and you just are allowing people to just dump on you. But you, this is what the writer is saying. You got to decide here. This is what he said. That's what he said. Amen. You got to decide what is it going to take? He said, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. So you got to, sometimes what that means is doing inventory. I got to do inventory and find and dis discover to find out what do I have to do, amen, for peace. And let, let me go on and see what he said. He said, and things wherewith one may edify another. You know, we got to build one another up. Do you know one of the worst things in the world is to be around somebody that's always tearing down somebody else? And my mother taught me that when somebody is always tearing down somebody else, it is because they, want, they don't want the light to shine on their stuff. <laughs> they don't want you to see really where they are. So in order for you, amen, not to see where they are, they want to bring up everybody else, what everybody, Tom, Dick, and Harry, what all everybody else is doing that's wrong. Because if you keep your mind on all of that, then you can't see uh, uh -huh, what, where I'm really at. Praise God. Amen. But it's time out. Amen. Because it is time for you to edify. That's what the scripture said here. He said, wherewith one may edify, edify, to build up, to talk well of. Praise God. You don't have to point out somebody's faults just because you see them. What happened to praying for them? What happened to lifting them? Ha ha. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is what we want to find ourselves doing. Well, uh, Pastor Bishop Matt, why do I want to do that? I'm glad you asked because you want peace. So you want to do those things that's going to enhance the peace that you have. Amen, praise God. So we do that by lifting, by edifying, by speaking well, praise God, of others. Amen, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, 1 Corinthians, those of you taking notes, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. Verse 33 says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. As in all churches of the saints. <laughs> you hear that? So God is not the author of confusion. So you see why it's so important for us to have a peaceful spirit. It's so important for us to open up our minds and our hearts. Listen, why? Listen, we, we are in expectation of the coming, the second coming of the Lord. We don't have time for foolishness. We don't have time for confusion, especially, and he's already let us know God is not the author of confusion. So if God ain't in it, don't you get in it. Do you hear me? I'm going to say it again. If God ain't in it, don't you get in it. Because this is a time, amen, that we are affirming that we have peace. Praise God. Amen. I, 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 I have peace on the inside. Amen. I have peace with God. Do you hear me? Praise God. I And, and sometimes what you have to say I have peace with me, with myself. Because it is when we don't have peace with ourselves, then certainly you're not going to have peace with someone else. But the Lord wants you to have peace today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm in 2 Corinthians now. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 13, verse 11 says, be perfect. 
be of good comfort, be of one mind. Then he said this, live in peace. I know some of you might not like this because you feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm repeating myself, but listen, you got to get this word in your spirit this week. This is the middle of the week, praise God. And so it's, it's obvious that the spirit of the Lord amen, is wanting you to open up your mind, amen, so that you can receive the peace of God. Because when you have the peace of God, hallelujah, amen, praise God, your life is better, amen, because of it, praise God. All right, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22, follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Did you hear that? He said, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So he's talking about your prayer life. See, in your calling on the Lord and in, in people that are praying with you, your heart got to be right. Praise God. Ah, I said, I'm going to say it again. Your heart got to be right. Praise God. And if the heart is not right, then the prayer should be, Lord, as David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Ah, bless your name. He said, and renew a right spirit within me. Because sometimes in this, in this walk of life, and again, it depends on who's in your company. And you know, I know uh, you don't have a lot of people in your company right now other than the people that's in your bubble. Amen. Are the people that's, you know, that you're around. Praise God. Maybe the people that you work with. Amen. And sometimes the thing that we have to uh, watch and observe is are they rubbing off on me or am I rubbing off on them? Praise God. Something for you to think about. Amen. In other words, what I'm asking you is am I really being a witness to somebody at work or am I just going along with, with their jokes and and with, with the people that they're talking about, am I just going along to get along? Or am I letting my light shine within me? Or can the people that I come in contact with, can they tell that I am at peace? Amen. Praise God. Can they tell that I'm a person of peace? Amen. Or do they have to wonder, really, what am I about? Oh, I say, amen. The word today, amen, is peace. Hallelujah. So again, in 2 Timothy, he's helping us by saying, follow. He's telling us who to, who to follow. Amen. Righteousness, faith, <laughs> hallelujah. Charity, which is love, hallelujah. Peace. And then he says, and with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing to have a prayer partner. Amen. Somebody that really believes in the power of prayer. Amen. Praying with you. Somebody that you can call because you what? You know their heart is pure. Amen. Praise God. You know their heart is, they write with God. Amen. Praise God. Somebody you can call. Amen. Say, look, I, I need, let's, can we pray? Amen. And I want to ask you a question. When people think of you, do they, do they know that you are a person that they can call for prayer? Or do they wonder if you're really going to pray for them? 
And, and this is, and I'm saying this because so many times when we come in contact with people, and sometimes people will say when they're going through something, they'll say, "Listen, would you pray? Would you pray for me?" And we say, "Oh, I'll be in prayer with you. I'll pray for you." Well, what happened to stopping what you're doing for a moment to say, "Father, in the name of Jesus." I lift up your servant to you right now because you already know the situation. You know what they're going through. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare victory in their life. I ask you to work out whatever is in their life that they need you to work out. Do it for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a moment. That's all it takes. So now two things have happened. One, you have kept your word. You prayed right then and there. The second thing that happened is that now you have allowed yourself to be a witness. Oh my God. A witness for the Lord. Why is that so important, Bishop Matt? Because I'm glad you asked. The harvest is plentiful, but it's the laborers that's few. Nobody really wants to do the work. <laughs> I didn't say it, Jesus said it. <laughs> he said, the harvest is plentiful. It's plenty of work to do. Somebody said, well, uh, uh, pastor, somebody said, Bishop Matt, uh, we're not in the church or we are in the church, praise God, amen. Uh, but, and there's nothing for me to do. Yes, there is plenty for you to do. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. It's plenty of people need witnessing to. Praise God. He said, but it's the laborers that are few. He said, so pray, amen, to the Lord of the harvest that he would send workers, laborers into the vineyard. And what I love about the Lord Amen. There's another portion of scripture. And he said, go into the vineyard and work. He said, whatever is right, I'll pay. And you know what I'm going to tell you with that? Can't nobody pay you like the Lord. When the Lord pay, he pays well. Amen. And it is not always with dollars and cents. Amen. It's with health. It's with strength. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I say it's with health. Amen. It's with strength. Huh? It's with stamina. Praise God. It's with stuff. Amen. That money cannot buy. Praise the Lord. But God. Amen. The song I said, he keeps on doing great things for me. Praise God. Amen. Are we together today? Peace. Say it with me. I have peace. I have peace. Amen. Praise God. All right. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14 said, follow peace with all men. Follow peace. Be at peace. Have peace. Are you listening? With all men. And holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. My sisters and my brothers, it is, it is so time out for rhetoric, you know, tearing down somebody. Praise God. It is so time, it, the time is out. Amen for that. But it is time for us to lift one another up. Amen. It is time for us, amen, praise God, to love on one another. Amen. You really want peace. Amen. You begin loving, amen, your brothers, your sisters. Amen. You be begin loving others as you love yourself, praise God. And sometimes what that means is learning how to love yourself. Amen. An old song we used to sing, amen, in the church, it said, I surrender all. Amen. Praise God. And sometimes that's what we have to do. 
Amen. We have to surrender all. Praise God. We have to give it up to the Lord. Let the Lord do. Lord, I surrender. Amen. Sometimes you just have to throw your hands up. Amen. Praise God. You have to throw your hands up and say, Lord, I, I just, I surrender. I, I'm tired of this battle. I'm, I'm tired of fighting. I'm, I'm tired of going through like I've been going through. Amen. Praise God. So I surrender. And somebody said, what do you surrender? I'm sur I surrender my will. I surrender my thoughts. Praise God. Amen. Because I want your thoughts. Amen. I want your will. Amen. To be done in my life. I surrender my old ways because I want the new way. I want you. Amen. In my life. I want you to move through me. Hallelujah. I want you to not just speak to me, but I want you to speak through me. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to have so much peace. Amen. That when, they, when I'm looked at, praise God, somebody will be able to say, oh, he got peace. Amen. I can tell just because of the, not just the smile on his face, praise God, but it, it is something that you feel when you come into the presence of somebody. Amen. They have peace. They're not tearing nobody down, praise God, but we're building one another up. And as we begin to do that, amen, as we begin to build, praise God, amen, as we begin to open up, praise God, amen, and allow the Lord Amen. To give us peace. Praise God. Amen. And I, I was uh, sharing uh, with someone the other day and they were sharing with me. We were talking about how that it seems like uh, the earth's equilibrium is off balance because it seems as though uh, uh, no one is really speaking well. Amen. Of, of anyone anymore. Everyone is like a dog eat dog world. Praise God. Amen. I said, but you know, we just got to get back to the basics. Amen. We got to get back to loving one another. We got to get back to being kind to one another. Are you listening today? Praise God. And when we can do that, when we can get back to loving on one another, amen, looking beyond uh, someone's fault, and seeing their needs and lifting up one another in prayer. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Then we can have peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Peace. Jesus said, my peace. Amen. I give to you. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I am just so glad. Amen. Today to know. Amen. That we can have peace his peace. Lastly, amen, praise God, because I think I'm just about running out of time. Lastly, hallelujah, praise God. Ah, oh my God, you know, I just, I can't close really without going to the Old Testament. David has so much to say, amen, about peace. Hallelujah. Oh my God, oh my God. Psalms Oh, Lord, so much, so many of the Psalms are, are bringing us right into peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look, let's look, let's look then at uh, Psalms 125 and verse 1. It says that they, they that trust in the Lord, listen to what it says, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Now, now remember, we talking about what we're talking about? Peace. Amen. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. See, when you have peace, amen, your trust is in the Lord. Are you listening? When you have peace, amen, it is because your trust <laughs> is in, that's why we can do what we do, because our trust is in the Lord, and because we trust him, amen, we have what? Peace, praise God. He said, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Drop down to verse five. Amen. As 
for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. Look what he said. But peace shall be upon Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Look, in other words, the world, the people in the world that don't know the Lord, amen, they don't have peace, hallelujah, but because you trust in the Lord, hallelujah, amen, because this is, we read it earlier, he is your peace. Oh, bless your name, oh God. He is your peace. Peace. So sometimes you got to say that I have peace. Because when, when you are in an uproar, when your mind, your thinking has been altered, the first time you say I have peace, it's like there is a battle. It's like a war. You know, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. You saying I have peace. And over on this side, it's saying, no, you don't have no peace. And then, uh, then, then the, your other side kicks back in and says, I have peace. Praise God. Amen. And the other side want to kick back up and say, no, you don't have no peace. Praise God. But you have to keep affirming. Regardless of what that flesh says, you say, look, I have peace with God. Why? How is it that you have peace with God? Because I trust him. Hallelujah. And because I trust him, no good thing will he withhold from me. Hallelujah. And I want to leave you with this today. I want you to know that you know that you know that you have peace. And and it may be somebody still saying, well, but I don't have. You got to stop saying that you don't have it. And if you want it, all you got to do is just slip your hands up and receive it. Receive it. Because he is our peace. Let's pray. Precious Father. It is in the name of Jesus. First, we want to just say thank you. Thank you because without you, we could not have any peace. But because of what you did at Calvary's cross, because you shed your blood for sinners like us, because of that, we can come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy in the time of need. I pray right now for every person watching, every person listening, those that have peace, those that's looking for peace, amen, those, amen, praise God. It seems like maybe their peace is trying to slip away. Right now, I pray for your people, that you will arise in us because it is you that is in us that is our peace. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would be glorified. Get the glory out of our lives. We bless you today. God, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. So God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you because number one, you're a very present help in the time of trouble. Somebody, even while I'm praying, somebody right now feel like they're in trouble. But you said that you was a present help in the time of trouble. So right now we declare, we decree peace over every situation in our life. Continue to give us that love that flows from heart to heart and breath to breath. We love you today. 
And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My friends, God bless you. I want to thank you so much for spending this time with Community Fellowship Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Of course, on our page, for those of you that would like to sow, amen, sow a seed, praise God. It's on our page. Just go to Community Fellowship through Givelify, amen, and sow your seed. Sow something. Uh, we're at the end of this year, and even some of you watching, amen, praise God, you've been uh, slack, amen, in your seed sowing. And I want to tell you today, this is not the time to slack up on your sowing, amen, but continue to sow because you already know, amen, how good God has been to you. Amen. God bless you today and God keep you is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen.